Hey everybody, welcome back. Talking today about animals. Can animals in the animal kingdom, and that is vertebrates, invertebrates, birds, reptiles, mammals, fish, insects, so on and so forth, just spontaneously change their gender at will. And this comes out of an, another modern argument. Remember I just picked apart a pro-abortion argument in the last uh, video that I did, and that might end up with a sequel because some of the responses. But there's this concept out there, and a lot of young people seem to believe that animals in the animal kingdom can just spontaneously change their gender at will. Tired of being a male? Balls drop off and you're a female now. And this type of like Jurassic Park science it doesn't really exist in nature, and I'm gonna demonstrate this for you here in a moment. So, are there animals that can change their gender? A handful, but we're gonna look at this very carefully because it's being used as an argument for human beings who claim to be gender fluid. And I will point out also that the term really doesn't quite fit even when talking about people because to be truly gender fluid, you have to be able to literally transmogrify your body at will. So your genitals would disappear and reappear as another sex. Not cosmetic surgery, not putting on a dress because you think you're a girl or whatever. It would actually require a physical transmogrification which humans are not capable of. So the term gender fluid is an oxymoron anyways when you're talking about human beings. So what does this look like? Let's get into this here. This is one of these things where I sit there and I scratch my head and I say, what are they teaching these kids? And are we this stupid? Well, I already know we are. I already know people are not as smart as they think they are. They're not that intelligent. And they're lazy and they're not gonna do the research, but I'm gonna do it here for you so please do follow along. Here we go. What they're talking about here is often referred to as sequential hermaphrodism. And a hermaphrodite is basically some animal that contains both sex organs. And being a hermaphrodite is usually a defect. You're usually born that way completely by accident. And typically, hermaphrodites are not capable of reproduction unless they're like slugs. So sequential means rearranging it. What does it say? The scientific name for animals that change sex is sequential hermaphrodism. Sequential hermaphrodites produce eggs at one stage in their life and sperm at another. And on the right here you get get something from a you get something from a website called Treehugger and they give you examples of 11 animals. Now I'm going to open this up since it's sitting here anyways, I'm going to open this up and take a look at what it is that they claim changes. First one up is the clownfish. Now, a clownfish does actually have the ability to transmogrify its body between genders. It explains here, born one sex but able to switch to the other if necessary. In this case, it's about face, which is called protandry, runs from male to female. So it's a male that changes to a female if necessary. Clownfish live in groups where only two members are mature, sexually mature, a large male, and an even larger female. The rest are smaller, sexually immature males. If something happens to the female in the breeding pair, her mate, her male mate transforms into a female and selects the next biggest male in the group to become her new partner. So change that will as a matter of necessity, not because they just got tired of being males, and apparently only a male can change to a female. And then uh, hawkfish is given as an example. This happens when the harem's male leader takes on too many females, prompting the largest female to turn into a male hawkfish and split away with half of the harem. Again, done out of necessary necessity to propagate the species. Then they offer you sea bass, black sea bass found throughout the US are 
protogenous hermaphrodites, animals that can change from female to male. Because the sea bass population is spread over a large range, it's difficult for scientists to observe their reproductive behavior in their natural habitat. And then you get the humphead rassy. You know, I don't need to read all of these for you to get the point. And we're going to get into um, species demographics here in a minute. Then they go on to banana slugs, bright yellow and up to 10 inches long. These worm-like mollusks are simultaneous hermaphrodites, meaning they don't change back and forth, but use their male and female reproductive organs at the same time. And a lot of slugs are capable of this. They are functional hermaphrodites. As I pointed out earlier, typically a hermaphrodite is not capable of reproduction because it is a defect in the physiology of the animal or the person for that matter. The, however, with slugs, they're born that way anyways. Pointing out the uh, banana slug here, they have both organs. They can impregnate each other or themselves. Butterflies, and this one says, and some creatures like butterflies, and this does happen in the insect world rarely. The split is visible over their entire body. Some Lycades butterflies display a rare dual condition called gynandromorphism that can cause male and female traits to be arranged either haphazardly or bilaterally with one side male and the other equally female. So they take on the appearance of both genders, basically, but they're still one gender if I understand correctly. And they did not do this on purpose. This was not an at-will transformation. Bilateral gynandromorphism also occasionally shows up in northern cardinals, and you see the cardinal is split uh, traditionally in birds. Males are the ones that are brightly colored, and females are rather lackluster in appearance. And this one is red on one side and gray on the other, grayish on the other. That's an example of a hermaphrodite again, and it will not pair up. It will not lay eggs, which is kind of lonely for the bird, I think, because birds typically male, mate for life, so. This is going to be a lonely bird, unfortunately. Frogs, and it says, For years, researchers have observed frogs spontaneously changing sex in the lab. Now they've done the same studies in the wild. Their work suggests that sex change, complete with fully functioning reproductive organs, may be fairly commonplace among green frog populations, while prior research indicated that sex reversal in frogs may be related to pollution introduced by humans. And um, I'm glad they brought that up because it's my understanding that this was never observed with these frogs before they were altered by being exposed to pollutants. Copperhead snakes. Some female snakes such as copperheads are capable of virgin birth or parthenogenesis, meaning the female fertilizes their own eggs without a male sexual partner. It, while not technically a reversal. This is an ability to carry out the reproductive functions of both sexes at once. And again, that point being, this is not a reversal. So why is this on this list of animals that can change their gender? They can't. They have the virgin birth. Sharks are capable of that as well. Where they may already be born with eggs that are fertilized and then they rebirth them to kind of simplify that description. Bearded dragons. The delightful bearded dragon actually performs a sex reversal in the egg. Studies show that when warm temperatures occur during egg incubation, male bearded dragons often reverse course to become female. That is a defect because of the eggs being too hot. That is not the unborn lizard in the egg deciding it wants to be another gender. And then green sea turtles, and they're going to give you the same explanation here, that if they're laid in areas where there's more higher temperatures, that they're going to get a larger female population. That is not by choice. They are not changing deliberately. Now, back to the definitive question here. How many species can actually legitimately transmogrify their bodies and reorganize themselves at will to go from one gender to another physically? Here's your answer. More than 500 species of fish. And that's literally your answer. Mammals cannot do this. Humans cannot do this. Reptiles cannot do this. Insects 
cannot do this. Uh, examples of hermaphroditic, functional hermaphroditic slugs doesn't count. And the fish do it as a matter of survival, not because they just decided they don't like being male or female anymore. So more than 500 species of fish, and how many creatures are on this planet? Well, here's a list for you. Category, vertebrate animals, mammals, birds, reptiles, amphibians, and fish, and then invertebrates. And we'll skip the plants down there. There's plants and there's uh, molds and funguses and things on this list as well. And that's known current species. There are more than this. But what you're looking at here is roughly close to 1.4 million. So what does that come out to? 1,371,428. So, and if you count the species that you don't know about, you could push that to 1,400,000 pretty easily. So out of 1,400,000 to try to justify the concept of gender fluidity in humans, you have... 500 or so fish to offer it doesn't compare at all it, it's not logical it's not logical and I should have said this at the beginning leave your feelings at the door and just look at the logic you feel like something feel like whatever you want don't use junk science to try to validate what you think or feel question what you think or feel especially if you're using stuff like this to try to back it up that's my point, <laughs> I think. I don't know what my point is. I just wanted to bring this up because I've been seeing this. And again, I'm like, what are they teaching these kids? You gotta be kidding me. And the fact that people believe it, they believe it because they want to. They don't wanna do the research. They wanna be lazy about it because a lot of people want to believe this stuff. Also, it's used to convince people that are too lazy or ignorant to research it for themselves. And that's important to consider. Don't believe everything that people tell you. And you don't have to believe me. You can look this stuff up for yourself and verify what I've just told you. And I encourage people to do that. What do you think? Thoughts? Feel free to post your thoughts in the comment section down below. Please do give the video a thumbs up if you get where I'm coming from. Share it if you can. Subscribe if you're new. All of that good stuff, I would appreciate it. Um, if you saw random cat images, they are strays that my wife and I take care of. People dump a lot of animals out in the woods here and we try our best to take care of them. And putting pictures of them in the video actually helps with the loading algorithm. If you wanted to help the channel out, every little bit helps and we sure do appreciate it, us and the cats. And if that's it, then what more can I say? But thanks for watching and we will see you again soon.